imagine. <laughs> it's amazing to have you here in Vienna. Uh, what was your first thought when you got the invitation to come here? My very first thought was, uh, yes, I'd love to come to Vienna. Thank you very much. That was my first thought, but then I thought it was in Italy. I thought Vienna was in Italy. And then they said, no, 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 it's not Italy, it's in Austria. Oh, oh, that's right, Austria. Oh, that's a long way away. Long way away. And, uh, and uh, I thought, oh, well, let's go to Vienna. Star Wars allows, allows me to have uh, afterlife, after the filming of the movie 17 years ago. Episode two, episode three for Star Wars I filmed back in the year 2000. But still, I'm here because of movies like Star Wars and things like that. So, uh, so it's just a wonderful opportunity to come to, uh, to a country I've never been to before and uh, meet the people. And uh, that's where we're blessed in a way. A lot of people have to travel and save up uh, their money to travel to p places in the world to visit. So I'm kind of blessed that uh, things like Star Wars and these uh, Vienna Comic Cons, the cons allow me to uh, travel around the world. So, so I'm very blessed. Wonderful place. A little bit colder than New Zealand at the moment, but, um, but the people are very friendly and uh, <coughs> We're going to try a schnitzel tonight, so... Uh, you have to. So, uh, so don't be here too long, please. <laughs> no, all good, all good, yes. And uh, what does it mean for you to come to such conventions? Well, it's... Um, it's, again, as I was saying, it's just an opportunity, again, to see, uh, meet, meet some of the fans. And uh, I find when I go to these conventions that I want to come back again and have a good look around at the place instead of just coming to the convention and seeing my hotel room and the convention hall. So I really get uh, a desire to revisit the place sometime in the near future. And just with the conventions, I only sort of get a quick sort of feel for it, you know, for the place. So, uh, so again, just another wonderful opportunity to travel. And uh, it just ended up, I just finished uh, a movie, so I was just on a bit of, had a bit of space. And then um, sometimes it's always good just to get away from, uh, from your normal setup back in New Zealand and uh, have a bit of a breakaway and then, uh, then go back refreshed. Oh, tell all the family I've been to Vienna. That's what I enjoy about traveling, going home and telling my mum... Uh, all about it. She has a listen, and I, I was just saying, "Mum, I'm going to Vienna." Oh, is that right? Oh, that's a long way away. But yeah, it's kind of just conversation around the family table at dinner time. So, uh, so yeah, I'm enjoying the travelling too. So uh, I think it's just um, a wonderful opportunity. Um, you played in so many movies and series. What do you think was the most influential one f for your life? Well, I definitely think uh, the movie Once Were Warriors was a New Zealand, you know, independent film. That was one of the, mo the, the movie that launched me into Hollywood. It was such a uh, powerful movie, quite a raw, emotional movie. And um, that was the one that really stood out, I think. And that's the one that kind of got me into Hollywood, kind of got me into movies like Star Wars, and things like that. So it was a little movie from New Zealand, uh, which we filmed over 20 years ago now, so uh, that would be the one that got me noticed. Uh, one of your most iconic characters is Django Fett, and do you remember your audition for it? Well, I was, uh, I do remember it very well, because it wasn't so much an audition. I was in Hollywood at the time, staying at the Bellage Hotel, and my agent said, look, you're going to meet the the casting agent of uh, Star Wars, Robin Gurlin. I even remember her name. And then uh, the facts came through where to meet her and everything, and the information was um, you could meet her on the 10th floor of the Bellage Hotel off of Sunset Boulevard, and I was staying at the same hotel. So I just thought that was weird, uncanny. So I went up one floor, met the lady, and we sat down like this, just like uh, she sat over there, and I sat there, and she had a camera, video camera, and we were just having a talk. And... Um, 
And I was waiting for her to pull some, you know, some lines out from Star Wars and have an audition, you know, like say some of the lines and that. But no, there was none of that. It was just basically a, a nice chat, a little talk, and she just asked me some questions about home and New Zealand, and then that was it. Then a little while later, I get a phone call to say, uh, Atem, this is Robin Gurlin here. We, we've just, uh, we're going to, uh, I think there's something like, we'd love you to play the part of Django Fett. I immediately dropped the phone and started going, yeah. I'm in Star Wars. And then I suddenly realized I didn't know who Django Fett was. So I had to pick the phone back up and go, ah, uh, who's Django Fett? <laughs> so, yeah, that's how it happened. And then next minute I'm flying to Australia. They filmed um, uh, Star Wars in Australia, Sydney. So that's why a lot of Kiwis, a lot of New Zealanders, Australians have a presence in the movie because it was local. It was good for George to hire a few Kiwis and Australians too, you know. So it was good, yeah. Is there any story you can tell us about your time on the setting of, of Star Wars? I got one funny story, I guess, comes to mind. Um, I was filming the scene in Star Wars when um, Obi Wan Kenobi comes to visit and asks, Do you like your army? And we were doing the scene, blah, 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 blah. It was my first day, too, so it was uh, quite nervous, quite nervous. And he was so good, too. Ewan McGregor playing uh, the Jedi, very still, you know. He only moved an eyebrow. And I had to try and sit myself down. But anyway, the scene went on. Then as we got to the end, okay, that's finished. I thought the actual shot, because I could see the monitor, I thought it was a little bit wide. I thought, you know, if he should come up for a close-up or something. And I didn't want to say, George, you think you need a close-up? I thought I'd say nothing. And then like six months later, Tim, they need you to fly to England to do some more Star Wars filming. So I flew all the way to England from New Zealand. I got dressed up in the suit and I had to go do that scene and it was a close-up. And I had to say, Boba, pack your bags, we're leaving. And that was it. So I flew all the way from England, landed, stayed the night, went to work, got dressed, Action! Boba, pack your bags, we're leaving. Cut! Thank you! <laughs> that was it. In close-up. Just what I was thinking. So, I could have saved him some money by asking, <laughs> saying, George, do you think you need him this close? So, that was a true story, but anyway. Anyway, yeah. Hmm. A totally different film, uh, Moana, yes. where you played uh, Chief Tui. Chief Tui, yes. Um, Why this role, and what does it mean for you to play uh, a Maori, Maori? Well, it was more of a... Uh, again, I had to audition, go through the process. And with that audition, even though it was just voice, they wanted to see you, and they wanted you to sort of act out a bit of a scene and all of that. And I just thought, of, hey, here's Disney, a wonderful opportunity to, to, uh, to get on Disney's books. So... Um, I did the audition, then I got a call back, so I thought, ooh, that's a good sign, call back, so I did a call back, did everything again, and then, um, then yes, I was successful, so I had to fly to Los Angeles a lot to do the voiceover, and they were, because it was a Polynesian story, they weren't sort of specifically making it a Maori story, or a Tahitian, or Hawaiian story, they kind of... They took a, quite a little bit from each island in the Pacific and, you know, in terms of the, the visuals, I think they used a variety of things. But, yeah, it ended up, <clears throat> I was a little bit nervous at first and had a few little uh, words to say about some of the things. But uh, when the movie came out, it was just quite, it was, uh, well, everybody in New Zealand, all the kids, they just sort of loved it. They loved the music. And uh, the reaction and the response has been very, very positive. So, um, so it was just fantastic, fantastic to be involved in it. And um, <coughs> and now I'm signing Chief Tui autographs. It used to be Django Fett or something else, but now the and the music of it and just the. Um, in fact, I was watching Moana, and sometimes 
sometimes I forget it was animation, you know, it was just so... You know, there's parts in Moana where the grandmother passes away and she turns into the stingray, you know, and there was just some some wonderful moments. Plus, it was uh, one of those movies the kids can enjoy, and um, I have a 12-year-old daughter, so... Uh, so I was able to take her to the Moana premiere and um, meet The Rock. and uh, So that, that was the best buzz for me, was taking my 12-year-old girl on, on the journey and uh, seeing the uh, movie come out and then come back to New Zealand and, and uh, have all the kids are singing the songs and uh, know all the words. So, uh, yes, just a great... It's a great thing. Sometimes I can make a movie and... Uh, you never hear of it again, so uh, it was nice to be in a in a, a successful uh, Disney film. So um, fantastic opportunity. So they should make a Moana too. I think many people would love it. <laughs> you also did voice acting in many video games, also in the Star Wars universe. Um, in the video games. Yes. Yeah, I go to do the 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 voice yeah. for Boba Fett in uh, what they call Battlefront. I did, uh, it's quite a, um, it's quite hard work doing the voice for games because it's just a whole lot of instructions, you know, go left, go right, da 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 da, da. They're very short kind of concise instructions. So, so it's not like a drama where you're sort of, um, you know, working off another actor and things like that, so... So, uh, yeah, with those games, you know what I do? I pretend I'm, uh, I pretend I'm Clint Eastwood. <laughs> I pretend I'm Dirty Harry in space, so get a, and that gives them a little bit of attitude. You know what I mean? Yeah, so, especially with Boba Fett in the games. I actually haven't even seen the game yet, so I actually don't even play the game. But, um, but people come up, the fans come up and... Uh, They enjoy hearing my voice and getting the instructions, so it's good to hear some feedback. And then also they want a signature, so I sign. And it adds to another thing I sign: Django Fett, Clone Trooper, Commander Cody, video game. So my list, you know, is getting bigger and bigger. All the things I can sign, so it's another one to sign. Last year you produced your first film, The Lost Pearl. Yes. That was a disaster. It was a directing. I was trying to direct, but it was a short film, so so uh, I learned a lot. Very enjoyable, though. Very enjoyable. But um, there's a few problems which I didn't really know about until you actually do that process, you know. I thought I wanted to uh, get into directing. And uh, just you have to try it out to see if you like it. So, uh, so I'll do another one soon, I think. But uh, that was a very good learning experience, going through the process, and uh, and uh, yeah. So, what are your next projects? Where will we see you more? More, in f well, um, more as an actor or more as a director? Well, I'm going to. Uh, I just finished Aquaman. I play. Uh, Aquaman's father so we only just finished that last month in Australia so uh, look forward to that movie Aquaman DC DC comic books comes out in um, next Christmas December next year 218 so um, so um, we'll see what happens when you're an actor you you never know what uh, tomorrow brings so uh, Sometimes it's exciting, uh, sometimes it's very dull. There's nothing happening, so um, it's just one of those things that uh, you have to be positive, so uh, so we'll see what happens. I'm just lucky that at the moment I'm here in Vienna enjoying the meeting the fans in Austria here, and some of them have traveled in from different parts of Europe, so we'll see what happens. I wouldn't mind directing again, as you say, but try a, a directing another short film just to get more experience but but yeah it's all learning so uh, and then try to try and keep up the acting on the side I find if you want to work in the movies in Hollywood you actually have to go there and be you know be there and be available to do auditions and things like that so uh, 
So I'll keep that up and then try and do another short film somewhere along the line.